<laughs> Hi, Ziska. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Good evening, good evening. Awesome, Karen. Wonderful. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We're starting a few. We're just going to wait for a few more persons to join in live and then we will start. Hi guys, welcome, welcome. Thank you so very much for joining us. Hi guys, let me know if you are hearing me clearly. If you could just drop a note in the a message in the chat box to let me know that you're hearing me clearly. That's okay, that's all right. Awesome, wonderful. So just give it a few more minutes and then we're gonna start, we're gonna go right into it.
Hi, Rishma. Awesome. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. So we're starting a few minutes. We're just going to wait for a few more persons and then we're going to go right into the lesson. Hi, Trisha. Good night. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. All right. So while we are waiting on, you know, a few more persons to come in, so let me just, you know, just um, start off by saying that I am very excited to be sharing with you guys the draping foundation for event professionals all right because it's something that we get or you know a lot of persons ask us quite often and if you have any questions at all please put it in the chat box um, uh, because this session is going to be quite interactive so we're going to be asking you some questions and so on um, just so that we can get a little idea as to where you're at now this is not just for event professionals it's also for persons who um, you know creative persons who like to get their hands into doing different types of events all right I know we are in a pandemic and right now a lot of persons are doing you know um, a lot of DIYs right so this is just to give you a little um, insight as to the things that we see a lot of persons are doing and you know some of the common mistakes that we see persons are doing in terms of um, designing or dripping right and this is just to give you a little guidance as to how you can go about in terms of rectifying that right so if you have any questions at all you can just put it in the chat box and I'll get right to them right so let's get started everybody else could join you know while we start so it is our absolute honor and privilege guys um, to be here today this is the first of many all right and you know before we start let me just tell you a little bit about us so my name as you would know <laughs> is Diane Moran Neal and along with me is Ziska Goodrich Taylor and we are the founders of Neal and Taylor wedding and events all right we are also the founders of NT Academy and event um, driven learning community and we basically try to assist planners or creative persons not just persons within the design industry or the event industry but persons who have a business because we also do a lot of coaching and so on right so we try to give persons um, a little bit of confidence in terms of building a sustainable business uh, and by doing exactly what you love right we have been trained and certified by the George Washington University in events planning we have also been trained by um, to design luxury wedding from industry leader Sinclair and more you can google this guy got this gentleman guys he is awesome all right and we are being accredited by the Institute of Events Design globally as event designers right hi thanks for joining us all right so in terms of working with event professionals or creative persons to build their business we do um, we do this online program as well as hands-on workshop right but today today we basically going to be speaking about one of our absolute favorite subjects and that is draping 
right? So um, I'm just going to go, um, you know, into a little bit of detail behind beginner's drapery and just give you some, you know, basic um, drapery tips and tricks and so on so that you can gain a, a bit of a good understanding and foundation for when you are starting your career, right? Like I said, not just an event in the um, draping, but you can also do this, let's say you're doing a DIY, right? Now, um, just to give you a little bit of insight of how the structure today is going to be, is that for the next couple of minutes, we're gonna first start off by just sharing some of the things that we see persons do wrong, right? And we have also done it as well, and some of those areas where persons can improve on, okay? So it's not gonna be anything offensive or anything like that. We just feel the need to share with you some of those things um, so that you can avoid those common mistakes, okay? Also, we're also gonna be giving you, um, we're gonna be a, a little bit of teaching um, on things that you can do to avoid those mistakes. All right, and then we're going to end it by giving you some action steps that you can take. And those of you who are interested in going to the next level, um, we definitely have an opportunity for you as well. All right, so if you, if that sounds fair, guys, let's get right into it. It's already eight eleven. All right, so persons can join in. The live will be up, so persons can um, you know view it and so on. And we are going to be sharing with you some areas that, again, we see persons go wrong when it comes to drapery. Remember, today we're going to be speaking about drapery, right? Now, listen, this, how I'm going to be explaining it, it doesn't, it's not going to be in any particular audience, um, order of importance, all right? But we saw three things that we want to share with you um, from our perspective as event designers that we think that persons go wrong when they are, you know, designing backdrops, right? So the first area that we saw is that person's not understanding measurements, right? So let, let's say, for example, you know the size of a room that you're going to be draping, right? And, uh, um, or the backdrop that you're going to be using. But then um, this method that I'm going to be sharing with you is going to assess you as a decorator in terms of how much equipment that you will be needing or you will be using, right? And that is in terms of your base plate, your uprights, your crossbars, your drapery, and everything that you need to take to an event so you don't embarrass yourself. Because the worst thing that you can do as a designer, you know, is going to, let's say someone hires you for a job, right? and you are quoting the customer and you're just guessing how much you know crossbars or, or, or base plates and so on that you would need now just to give you a little information base plate on our um, group we have a little tutorial of what the base plate and the crossbars and the uprights are so just to give you a quick synopsis of it the base plate is what you put on the ground then you have something called um, a peg or a pipe that is what goes into the base plate. Then the upright goes into that. And then you have your crossbar, which you hang your fabric on. So this, and you use a backdrop. Um, let's say um, you go to an event and the, let's say a hotel. And then the venue says, we don't want nobody sticking or attaching anything to the walls, but you need to drape or flank the room. That is what we would normally call flank the room right so you need to you know um, have this standalone um, object or equipment or hardware that you can use to design your backdrop or your drapes or whatever the case may be right um, now the second area and oh let me say also just mention that when you um, you, you thoroughly understand measurements um, ahead of time right um, and you know everything that you need to bring ahead of time this will save you um, the embarrassment right and it will save you time and save you money right so the second area that we feel that you know people can go wrong is that they're not experimenting with different fabrics 
So sometimes when you're first starting off with drapery, what are you doing a uh, tent decor um, in your backyard or whatever the case may be, you go out and the first thing a lot of persons purchase is the sheer fabric. Yes, I know it's very economical, right? But try to experiment and that is what sets you apart from your competition, right? Because even if you plan to get into this industry, at the same time, right, you want your thing to look good. <laughs> Right? Even if you're doing this DIY for yourself or your family, you still need it to look professional. You remember you are to, you remember even if like I said, even if you are not an event planner and you are doing this for a family member or for a friend or for a child, right? Remember you're taking photos, you are taking things that is gonna create memories and you want you know the things to look good. Who's with me on that? <laughs> right? So um, what you can do is, you know, experiment with different blends of fabric, right? And sometimes people start off with the shea, like I said, but they would use the flat shea. Now, when I say flat shea, I'm speaking of the shea that um, doesn't have, you know, any wrinkles. So you have to iron it, you have to fold it, you have to steam it, you know. And this is very, very, very time consuming, right? So... I'm not sure if you know, but if there is something called crushed shea. I don't know if anybody ever heard about that. Let me know in the comments if you ever heard about crushed shea. Or you probably just went into a, um, you know, a fabric store to you know, purchase some fabric for curtains or whatever the case may be, and you ever saw that fabric. It's called crushed shea, right? Um, <clears throat> And crushed shea kinds of give the illusion of some that it has some mild wrinkles in it. And it also helps you as a decorator because if you have the flat shea, like I said, that has, you know, you need to iron and so on, um, it, it's very time consuming, right? Um, with crushed shea, it, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving because you can get away with it. It's crushed, right? And not only does shea um, comes in crushed, you have, you have the velvet, you have the, you know, things like that. So in your spare time, you can go out and experiment with the various blends of fabric. Um, you can order it from places like CV Linens. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. Persons from the international community um, who, uh, you know, um, purchase a lot of stuff online as well. You would know about CV Linens or even Event Deco Direct, right? Or you can just go into your local fabric store and just test out some you know take two different blends of fabric together hold it together and see how it works right um, you can also make um, your panels yourself we do that most of the time right it you just need to have enough space for your rod pockets right and rod pockets is what you would slip your crossbar through or you would just you, you know like you would seam you know your rod through that's called a, 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 a rod pocket right and i would say about two to two and a half inches in length uh, when you're stitching it right so some of the popular fabrics um that are you know on right now that a lot of persons a lot of designers you know play around with is velvet velvet is a premium blend of fabric right you have you have the crushed velvet and you have the regular velvet and then you have the spandex and of course sequin and, and, and if you have looked at any of our videos you would know we always <laughs> speak about sequin spandex and velvet right so spandex is very very beautiful it is really beautiful guys and the way that it swags you know um, the way that it hangs it just doesn't get wrinkles right so if you're looking for a premium dollar um, invest in those blends of fabric you can't go wrong but guys um, <clears throat> um, you would know that if you don't experiment with your fabric so that's why I'm always suggesting you know play around with, 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 with the cloth <laughs> right and then the third area that we'll be discussing is to have a design plan so you know most people go wrong by just not having a design plan you know thinking that you can just go in and freestyle you know so you get to the venue or you let's say you're doing something in your backyard um in a tent um in a 
um, it could be wherever you are doing a, a DIY or you're doing a professional job, right? And you just say, you know what? I just freestyle it. Hope it might come out. You know, it will look nice when it when it everything put together, right? But most times you need to know exactly um, what you're going to be doing on the event day, right? Um, sometimes when you go to a venue, they will tell you you cannot um, decorate the day before. You have to decorate the day of. Right? Some venues allow you to decorate the day before. Not all venues do that. Some of them just give you a few hours and you have to, you literally have to be on the top of things when you are going to decorate, right? Um, there are different softwares as well that you can use. For example, um, the Vivian Event Designer software. But guys, this is a very expensive. That software is very expensive. But this can I, we are pen and paper ghouls, right? <laughs> So we like to draw it out and see, you know, how we're going to be designing it and what goes where and, you know, things like that. And don't be afraid to practice your backdrop ahead of time. Take pictures and that way your team of persons who are there to support you, they will be able to help you as well. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail of each of these areas in just a moment, right? But I just wanted you to know and to hear from us what those areas are that we will be discussing and you know what we think um, persons can improve on to avoid some of those mistakes okay so let's get into the teaching part right so someone comes and they say okay Diane or okay Ziska you're telling us that we need to know about measurements and things like that so how you do that how do you do that right so I'm going to give you a little bit of snippet um, of what is in our mind um, on how we do it. I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. I'm just saying that's the way we do it, right? And it, it makes things a lot easier for us. Um, so just going to be sharing that with you. So I am not familiar with screen sharing, guys. <laughs> Forgive me. But I'm going to, um, you know, draw on a paper to show you exactly a little illustration. You can also do it as well um, as good reference for when you are doing your um, designing, right? So, on the, so let's take a piece of paper and draw a square. So I'm going to do it and show you what I'm referring to. So you just take a piece of paper and you draw a square, right? I hope you're seeing that. A regular square. Right? And on the top and bottom of the square are 40 feet. And on the left and the right of your square are 30 feet. So you can write 40 feet at the top and at the bottom and 30 on the sides. Alright? So we're going to use this room as an example. So let's just say someone contacts you and they say, hey, you know, I would like to hire you to drape a room for me, right? And the size is going to be a 40 feet by 30 feet in this particular room, right? And for the sake of this conversation, let's just say this is a perfect square, a perfect square. So this is your perfect room, right? But ideally, a room is never a perfect square. You're gonna have a beam here, you're gonna have a wall sticking out there, you know, you're gonna have a curve, you know. But let's just say that this room is a perfect square, all right? Um, so let's break it down. The first thing we're gonna do is start to the, at the entrance, right? So let's say um, the particular door to enter the room is eight feet high, right? And eight feet wide. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the door smack in the middle, right? So let me show you what I'm doing here. So you have the door in the middle and it's eight feet. So you can write eight feet, right? Now, on one side, you have 40 feet minus your eight feet now this is how you measure how much panels and fabric and so on for a room all right so you have eight feet by your door but remember the length of this room is 40 feet so what you're going to do is minus eight feet 
or minus 40 minus 8, 40 feet minus 8 is going to give you 32 feet, right? And now remember, you have to divide this 32 feet to accommodate the both sides of the door. So 32 feet divided by 4 will give you 8 feet. So you will now know that you have 2 8 feet on one side and 2 8 feet on the other side. Because remember, you need to get back to your 40 feet. So let me just say it again. You have a square, right? That's your room. At the top of your room, it's 40 feet. At the bottom of your room or your entrance is 40 feet. At the sides of your room are 30 feet and 30 feet. So you're starting with a door, right? And at the door, you have an eight feet door. Because remember, when you are decorating a space, you need to take measurements. You need to know exactly the size, the length, the, and the breadth of the room that you'll be draping. So you have a door which is eight feet. But you need to get back on either side your whole 40 feet in total, right? So you're going to minus 40 minus 8 will give you 32 feet. But you need to split up the 32 feet between the both sides, right? So that's how you end up with 8 and 8 and 8 and 8, right? Now, we're going to put down base plates. Remember, you need 2 8 feet on one side and 2 8 feet on the other side, right? So you write 8 feet and you put a base plate. 8 feet and you put a base plate. 8 feet, a base plate. 8 feet, a base plate. Right? So you have 16 feet on one side, 16 feet on the other side. Right? So now you need to know what type of inventory that you need. So what sides crossbars do you have? You need to figure that out. Right? So that's why when you're purchasing, you don't just purchase one particular length. You purchase, you know, multiple lengths so that you would be able to accommodate different types of jobs, right? So if we use a crossbar that, um, so let's say we use a crossbar that is size 6 to 10 feet, which is, you know, basically standard. Or we use something that is 7 to 12 feet in length, right? Then we would need to divide this 16 feet by 8, which is 2 right so what i'm saying is that you have two eight feet sections on one side of the door and two eight feet sections on the other side of the door because remember the door is smack right there in the middle right so, okay so in order to do that you all you need to put down your base plate so we need to frame the door and that's why i put the base plate here so that you can see you know where the base plates are going right and the circles basically represent the base plates all right guys because remember i'm not a graphic artist right <laughs> so then you're going to also need two for either sides of the door and if you so if on your paper if you haven't done it already you could put in the eight feet and so on right on the left and the right so that at least you will have an idea and you can follow what I'm, where i'm going with this all right now keep visualizing this picture right and then we're going to look at the left side right um and that side is 30 feet long so what you could do you can do remember it's 30 feet and uh, the length of a crossbar a basic one is 10 feet so you can do three 10 feet crossbars right um now for the purpose of this example let's just say we're going with um two um 15 feet um crossbar right makes life so much easier instead of going three 10 feet to get to get you to the 30 feet we're just going to go with three with two 15 feet crossbars so what you do on this side you put 15 feet by two right And you have your 15 feet and your 15 feet. Guys, I'm not sure if you're seeing this, but I hope you're following with me on your paper. <laughs> All right? So, 
um, right, so just write 15 feet by 2 on that side. So still visualizing your this example. Now remember, um, I still have that base plate and upright that is at the bottom left corner. Because remember, on the first 15 foot wall, we put 6 base plate, right? And, uh, and, uh, and this is because the wall is adjacent to the 30 feet wall, right? So we don't need to put a base plate there. Right, because the particular crossbar that we use have four slots in it. So I'm just going to use another crossbar going the opposite direction, which is on the other end, which is this end. Right? But I need a crossbar in the middle because remember, you know, you'd, when you put fabric on a crossbar, especially when you extend it to its maximum length, the crossbar. It sags in the middle. Although it's iron or aluminum, sorry, as the case may be, it will still sag, especially if you're doing, you know, um, you know, like double layer fabric and, you know, things like that. All right? So, on that side of the wall, we have three base plates, right? We had six in the front, I'm on the 40 foot wall, two on one side, two on the other side, and two in the middle by the entrance, right? So all you need for that side would be two because you already have one there, right? So now we are on the 40 foot wall. So on the 40 foot wall, we just need four there because you would need, we'll use a 10 foot crossbar, which is 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. Remember a crossbar, um, a basic crossbar, it's 10 feet. So you use four 10 feet crossbars um, and you're good to go there, right? So we put down the base plates so we put four right one at the end two one in the middle and one at the other end that's four crossbars four um then those are four ten feet crossbars right now we have the base plate which is already down on the end so remember, you just need four, right? And you put the crossbars every 10 feet apart, right? So now we just have the remaining 30 feet wall, which is on this side, to deal with, which is on the right side. And remember, on your left side, we put two 15 feet sections, right? So if you do something to the left, you have to do the same thing to the right, right? Now... Um, since so I have a thought so say we have enough 9 to 16 foot crossbars using 15 feet crossbars we um, just need to put 2 on that side right so when you check up now I know this sounds a bit confusing for somebody who is listening to it or doing it for the very first time um, but um, you need to have a visual of exactly uh, how you need to know how much crossbars and so on just remember you have a square one is 40 one is 40 one is 15 one is 15 the one by the door it, it you need um one two three four five six crossbars because you need to come back to 40 because it's 40 in front at the back right because it's 40 and you don't have a door there you just put um you use 10 feet crossbars and you just put four on the sides that you have 30 feet left and right right you could just use two you could either use three 10 feet crossbars or you could just use two 15 feet right simple enough now when you add up all of that right you need at least 13 crossbars you know I telling you 13 crossbars all right now in terms of your drapes Let's go with the sheer fabric. Now, sheer fabric is usually 10 feet wide, right? And so being a beginner, I don't want you to think that, okay, well, the drape is 10 feet wide, and for this particular crossbar for the room, which is 10 feet, you know, you could use, you know, the 10 feet um, sheer. No, guys, no, 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 <laughs> right? Because what is going to happen is that if you just put one panel of 10 feet sheer, on a 10 feet crossbar what do you think is going to happen 
the whole crossbar is just gonna look flat it's not gonna have any um, what you call it gather right it's just gonna look stretched very tacky you know and that is not what you want right so you could actually use four 10 foot or 10 feet panels for one crossbar right um, but we personally like to use between five to six pieces because we love our stuff to look very gathered right but for the sake of this conversation let's just say we're going to go with four panels per crossbar right so we need to check so if we're going to do that um, and we have five sections of eight we're going to put four um, we're going to put four pieces on each section right so you have five sections of eight and you're going to put four pieces of panel per section so five by four that's 20 right and then you have your 15 feet section and that was just for the door 20 pieces of panel for the door area that's your first 40 feet and then you have your 15 feet sections which is a bit longer so you can't put four panels you need at least five or, or probably six right so if you put six panels per 15 feet you need um, six and six is 12 because it's two sections so you need 12 on one side 12 panels of fabric on one side and 12 panels of fabric on the other side so that's a total of 24 drapes for the sides <laughs> right and then um, you still have your 40 feet fabric um, panels you know um, sorry your 40 feet wall at the back to put your panels on right so that's just to give you a little idea as to how many panels of fabric that you need you just need to check if I have a 10 feet um, drape support rod or a crossbar I need to put at least um, four panels to five panels per crossbar you don't put one 10 feet Shay, that's gonna look really really tacky and that's not that's not what you want all right so guys in total when you add up everything you need at least 62 panels of drapery for a 40 by 30 room 62 panels right now imagine if that was a flat shear you know what you know what is going to happen to you you would now need to iron all of that and who's going to volunteer to do that <laughs> right so that's why I say that you need to invest in you know the, the, the crochet you know what I'm saying make your job a whole lot easier it's maintenance free things like that so guys all you need to do is just practice 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 and you know so that when you are doing a quote for a customer you don't under quote yourself you know at a loss or a break even to your company right because some persons doesn't understand that designing events it takes a lot right you have to prep the prepping which is like ironing is like making your um what you call it like your props those things are at a cost as well so you don't just you don't just um you know come up with a, a, a price you know in our next in another um live you're going to discuss pricing and that's going to be really interesting right so for this portion of it i hope you know it gave you a little bit more understanding you know of how you go about you know getting your how much hardware you need and your hardware is like your your drape support rods your your base plate your crossbars as well as how much fabric that you need for that particular space so let's say when you go to a um when you have a tent you do the same um measurements you know the size of the tent that you're renting you know when you put up let's say you don't have a um a, a, what you call a pipe and drape stand you can just use a conduit right just remember it's the same length the same addition multiplication everything applies the same measurement applies right so next we're gonna touch briefly on what we already spoke about all right and that is regarding the different blends of fabric and so you know going out and testing the different fabrics itself is going to be a game changer for you so please don't be afraid to experiment with different colors and different textures and you know different patterns and so on and just seeing what works for your particular design and then you will realize that maybe I prefer this over that you know what I'm saying and then the customer is gonna say oh this is really beautiful 
right? But you also need to be comfortable um, enough and confident in your own design skill, in, in, in your skill set, uh, all right? And um, again, you can go to CV Linens or even Deco Direct. Let me just put a disclaimer there. We are not being paid in any way, guys, to promote a company, a brand, a product, anything like that. This is just so that you can understand, you know, where you can get the best bang for your buck, where we have discovered to be you know they have really pretty items gorgeous items and it's really usable and you know budget friendly as well all right another aspect when choosing fabric that is really important is trying all the um to confirm that your fabric is fr now when i say fr i'm speaking of flame retardant right i'm not sure if you ever heard about this term um, but this is basically what a lot of venues would ask for, especially hotels and so on. When you have these pretty large events, they want to make sure, let's say, God forbid, the um, place goes up in flames, you know, they want to ensure that when you bring in, you know, your item to, you know, decorate a space, it doesn't add to it, right? So that's why some persons will ask you for the certificate, right? So if you're investing, if you go online, you know, you would see those panels. It comes in different blends, so you don't have to worry about it being just a boring color. All right? Now, lastly, I want to touch on your on design plan. So when you're thinking about your design, you know, sometimes you can, again, like I said in the earlier portion of this video, you just want to freelance it, right? But to get great results each time that you don't feel like, you know, you're under so much pressure or stress, so go ahead and plan ahead of time and when it comes to you know the drapery piece you can go ahead and set something up do a mock-up guys listen to me you see mock-ups that is one that is a trick right it's a good trick that you can try now I know some persons may not have you know some of the materials that you would need to do a mock-up and it'll be like if you're renting the same product Guys, forgive me, I, my fur baby here decided to join our session. <laughs> All right, so, yes, like I was saying, guys, um, do a mock-up, right? Remember that mock-up save times. It saves you the embarrassment of having to go to an event that, you know, you're just going to freelance something. And we have, we have this saying in event planning called force majeure right and that means what can go wrong will go wrong what can go wrong will go wrong you know and but when you do like a mock-up someone from your camp someone who is on your team they could basically just jump in and help you you know what I'm saying so having a design plan because first of all they will already have your vision of what you had um, intended to do they will already have that because they will have already seen it during, during you know, for the mock-up, right? So having a design plan that it can be really, really beneficial to you as an owner or as a decorator, as a designer, as the case may be. And when you are putting that design together, my other tip or our other tip is that just keep in mind that someone is paying you to do this. Someone is paying you for a service, right, to do this particular design. So it needs to look like a professional did it right it needs to look polished and one of the ways that you can make sure that your drapes look complete and looks polished it needs to look neat all right so when you are doing your pleats make sure that your pleats are nice and you know looks very flowy and so on you know and then at the base of your drapes now like I said you have your pipe and drape right now if you're just using like a conduit if you don't have a pipe and drape stand you don't really have a base to work with but once you have a pipe and drape stand you don't just throw the fabric you know you drop it and however it falls on the ground oh just it looks good like that mm -mm. you need to puddle puddle now we will show you in our um our tutorial when what we mean by puddling right um so walk around your backdrop walk around your room that you're draping and basically make sure everything look professional right so those are some of the tips that um, you can do to avoid, you know, some of the mistakes. Um, we feel that persons go wrong when it comes to drapery. But I hope that this is very helpful to you. 
and it has been so much fun to me just sharing with you what we have learned all right because that is our goal to basically share with you what we have learned so that you know all of us you know can be excellent and experts in what we do all right now we just have a few action steps before we end because we have like what 15 minutes again right one of the things that we want you to do when you start to grow your inventory is to purchase multiple sizes all right so when it comes to things like crossbar because at some point some persons will want to start to purchase you know your base plate your crossbars your you know things to that sort now um don't just go out and purchase things because oh i just need one guys i know in one of our videos we would have explained a, a little joke that we have where when we purchased our um, first crossbar, um, we didn't know what is the meaning of a telescopic kind of fix. We thought, well, a pipe and drip stand is well, a pipe and drip stand, you know, anyone could work, right? The cheaper, the better. <laughs> right? Wrong, guys, wrong. So this is why we are sharing with you um, the things that you can do to avoid those mistakes. You have something that is telescopic. It can be, it can broke, it can be broken down or built up. To whatever height that you purchase it right as well as with a fixed kit some fixed kit starts at 10 feet and it goes an additional 10 feet right so when you have a kit like that right you have to transport it and that is an issue that a lot of persons have because especially when you have this trolley of like in this example you need about 13 crossbars imagine you have 13 um, uprights that is 10 feet and then you have the crossbars right you know what's gonna happen there you need to hire a driver but if you have a, um, a telescopic kit you can break it down stack it neatly it could fit in your wagon it can fit in your, you know whatever and you can transport it all right so one of the tips that we would like for you to take away is that when you are purchasing um, you know your inventory or growing your inventory you know purchase multiple sizes okay so when it comes to like your crossbar you can get crossbars from three to five foot four to seven foot six to ten feet seven to twelve feet nine to sixteen feet that's just to give you an example of the various lengths it comes in right because like I said you don't want to be in a situation when you walk in and you know you have an area where let's say the wall um comes out a particular way in this example it was a perfect example you know a perfect square but in a room in a in the real life scenario you will not find that nine out of ten times you're not going to find that you're going to find a room with different you know dimensions and so on right so um you know in the early days when we had started um draping we had a, a bit of an embarrassing <laughs> In situation where you know um, we this this room we had this room to decorate and the room was you know it was uh, I think the, the, the kit was like 10 feet and the room was like I think was um, the space we were supposed to be decorating was like about six feet but remember the kit is 10 you know yes we were able to sort out the issue we were able to think you know on our feet just like that you were able to get someone to assist us but you don't want to be in a position like that right so one of the um, it's not a good feeling right and one of the sizes that is commonly used in 6 to 14 feet because and if you get a telescopic kit that is 6 feet to 14 feet listen to me guys you can't go wrong with that right so that is one thing that I hope that you take away from this now if you are using uh no when you are going into larger events right let's say like production festivals you know carnival things like that you would need something that is more than um six feet things would start at 14 feet and going up from there right or um and those are like for production stuff like you know like you're doing um like um shows you know things like that you're gonna need a little tall crossbars however if you are doing things like weddings and baby showers and things like that you don't need to go that high a 6 to 14 feet would work well a 6 uh, 6 to 10 feet would work perfect as well all right another thing is always do a site visit um, before you 
your, your event you need to go and take measurements right even when you are using let's say um, if you're having a DIY at the back of your home and you're doing a tent right yes you don't need to take measurements for your tent because you would know what tent you are purchasing but if you are doing like a, a room even if it's inside of your home take measurements right um, because you would need to know how much equipment you're going to need, how many base plates, how many crossbars, how many uprights, how many pieces of drapey for that particular event. All right. So basically, guys, those were the action plans that we have for you. And just to recap, right, the areas that where we found most persons go wrong when it comes to drapery are not knowing the room measurements, which could lead to not having enough fabric or enough equipment or hardware, right? not knowing the different sizes or the different not size but the different types of fabric to use and not having a design plan that leads to a polished professional look all right so anybody have any questions that they want to ask me uh, i'll try my very best to answer <laughs> all right so basically this is just to explain to you you know um what you need to do and some of the mistakes that you you know you, you you can try to avoid when you are designing events all right so like i mentioned in the earlier part of this segment where um you know um we wanted to just share something that we are doing at this time right because you might have a person who say well you know wait i want to learn more you know i want to get a little bit more information you know what you're saying could really be beneficial to the line of work that I'm in, right? So, and they want to know what are the mechanics behind how we do some of our beautiful designs. Because when you go on Neil and Taylor wedding and events, you would see some of the designs that we would have done, right? Well, guys, you are in a treat. You're in for a treat, all right? Because just for taking the time to listen to us, this is the first of many guys, right? Um, but just for taking the time to listen to us, um, we're going to give you an invitation to join our Facebook community. It's called, now most of you would have already been on it. It's called the um, NT Academy Event Draping Learning Community, right? And we will be posting a lot of step-by-step -step tutorials, which you will find on our Facebook page, as well as on our YouTube channel, right? We have recently started a podcast where the link will be sent in the Facebook group. Um, so that you can basically listen, you know, at your leisure. You could be driving in your vehicle. You could be, you know, just sit down by your desk doing your work and you just want to listen to get a little bit more motivation or you want to get some tips, tricks, and techniques of designing. So we're going to be starting, um, we're going to be sharing, sorry, our podcast on our page. Um, so you're going to find us on iTunes and on Spotify. I hope I'm saying it correctly. <laughs> right? So um so also um we also going to be having a drapery course um so the beginner drapery course is going to be on our facebook page i think we put up i think two segments already um the foundation or basically what is a base plate or what is a so we're going to be doing it step by step what is a base plate what is an upright what is a crossbar and then we're going to take it from there into the actual designing right the up and over technique how to hide your pole covers all these different things right so we're going to be sharing those on our facebook page and um we will also be sharing on udemy um our online course right now on udemy you're going to get three free modules all right and i think the model is going to be like a, a an hour to hour and a half long Right? We're going to be going literally step by step into designing. And that is going to be on udemy.com. Right? So we're also going to be sharing those links with you. Right? So you could check us out. Stay in the loop on Facebook. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any tutorials and things like that. Right? So remember guys, we're going to be having a podcast. And you can find it on iTunes and on Spotify. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> right so guys um if you have no questions you can if you have questions but you just want to post it in this um live that's 
fine as well you could post it on the Facebook group and we will try to answer it as a community because we are all there to learn we are all there to share you know ideas and so on all right so guys thank you so very much for your undivided attention we would love for you to stay in touch with us and again if you have any questions or if because basically we want to see your designs right so when we post up a tutorial you know you can try it at home you know you can use whatever that you have any panels or so on if you don't have the actual um, fabric panels you know you could use your curtains you know because Christmas is coming you want to be able to design these gorgeous you know um, things in your home all right you can you, you may have um, birthday parties for our loved ones you may have um, baby shower you may have whatever you have that you want to be you know designing for right we would be able to share with you what we have learned and some tips and tricks that you can use as well as things that mistakes that you can avoid all right so guys it is four minutes to nine thank you so very much for joining us again guys if you have any questions you know just drop it in the comments below and it was great chatting with you thank you so very much for having you know having us and for being so attentive have a blessed night <laughs>